Well, we are glad to see you this evening. Thanks for coming. Let's stand, do a little singing tonight, pick some songs tonight, sing about heaven. We haven't done that in a while, so sing this very first verse. As we all get to heaven, sing on that first verse with me. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. What a great day that's going to be. Sing that last verse now. Onward to the prize before us, soon his beauty will behold. Soon the pearly gates will open, we shall tread the streets of gold. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, We'll sing and shout the victory. Hey, that's a good singing tonight. I like that song. Well, let's go out in prayer. We have children's services that are going on tonight in, in their Bible study. They're in our back area. And then our teens over in the gym. We've got some new visitors there tonight, so we're glad to see some new faces as well. And I uh, had some kids bring some friends, so it's always a good thing. I have to brag, one of our girls, she is meek and mild about everything and uh, she came in she goes I think I got suspended for a day or so I said what for and uh, she said uh, I may have gotten into a fight at school so she's you know and everybody videos it I got to be honest I was proud uh, she she got in some good I told her I said good shot and so uh, <laughs> it's probably not what I'm supposed to be saying but anyway it was good uh, <laughs> so anyway but uh, we're, we'll have our Bible study tonight as well, and then our, our auditorium one here. So we're glad you're here. Good crowd tonight. So let's ask the Lord to bless us this evening in everything we do, and then we'll have our prayer time in just a little while as well. So let's pray and ask the Lord to bless us tonight. Heavenly Father, we come to you very thankful for all that you've done for us this week. We do pray that you'd bless us tonight as we've come to be in your house and Lord, tonight may this be a, a great way to get, get a shot in the arm of, of needing to be refreshed and, and revitalized this week as we go through the rest of this week. And I pray that you would just touch our hearts as we study your word tonight, as we open your word. May the things we study tonight be applied to our lives. Be with the request and prayers that will be asked in a little while. Lord, you know every person's heart. So bless the time as we spend together that everything we do be profitable and bring honor and glory to your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Keep singing along with us. Sing that first verse. I like this. We always say it. You know, this has got to be a, a Texas song because it says, When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. I'm not sure that's an English word or not. But anyway, that's a good Texas term. So sing along with us. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more And the morning breaks eternal bright and fair When the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore And the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there When the roll is called up yonder When the roll is called up yonder When the roll is called a yonder. When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Let us labor for the master from the dawn till setting sun. Let us talk of all his wondrous love and care. Then when all of life is over and our work on earth is done, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder 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 i'll be there well good singing 
I apologize. I'm still trying to get through all my sinus stuff this week, and uh, it, it just keeps hanging on like everything else. And so, uh, but it's better than what it was. So I guess that's a good thing. Well, we got a couple of things we wanted to start with tonight. This is just for some humor things tonight, and so this is a great Christian comedian named Ken Davis, and uh, he talks about why he don't drink. Here's the reason right here. Watch. My lips never touched alcohol as a boy. You say, oh, you must have been a good little boy. No, I had a father. <laughs> and my dad used to say, come here. And he'd get that far away from me and say, breathe upon me. <laughs> And I would breathe on him, ah, ha. And then he would get up off the floor. <laughs> and he would say, if I ever smell alcohol on your breath, that will be the last breath that you take. <laughs> and I believed my father. So I became what was known as the designated driver before the designated driver even existed. I was the guy. You drive. And I watched what would go on. I had a friend one time sitting in the back seat. He drank a bunch of beer and then some hard liquor on top of it. And we're driving home. He's on the football team. And he's laying in the back seat doing this, calling out, Mommy! Mommy! And then he yelled to us, Oh, stop the car! We stopped the car, he leaned out and got sick. As sick as I've ever seen anybody. Shut the door, drove down the road, Mommy! Oh, Mommy! Stop the car! Stop the car, open the door, he got sick. That happened five times. The fifth time, I turned around to look because I knew he didn't have nothing left. I fully expected to see his tennis shoes come shooting out of his mouth. <laughs> on Monday morning, on Monday morning, we used to hang out in the locker room. And he comes into the locker room, and he looks, his eyes look like two burnt holes in a blanket. And he goes, oh, you should have been with us Saturday night. Did we ever have a blast? <laughs> I was 16 and I figured it out. This is stupid. If that's fun, I got a cheaper way to do it. Sneak out behind the barn and go, ah. Oh. Well, that's what you ought to consider. Uh, I've never been a fan of throwing up, so. Stay away from everything that makes you do that. Well, tonight is the final night for, for our pre-sale of our uh, new church t-shirts. And so if you are, have not paid for yours, this is the night we have to get all of our money turned in. Uh, we're placing the order in the morning. Uh, tomorrow's the deadline. And after that, I can't order any more uh, from this company on this particular shirt. So we gotta get it all in. So if you've paid, and you put your money on my desk or you gave it to Joanne or gave it to me or whatever, we didn't mark your name down if it's been paid or not. So you need to do that tonight as you leave. And so if you haven't put paid by your name, please do that because when we start adding up everything tomorrow, uh, if your name doesn't have paid by it, we're not ordering those shirts. And so we don't want to mess, mess you up or get, get it messed up or anything like that. So. Make sure that if you pay tonight, just put the money on, on my desk in the back and uh, we'll get it taken care of. But as you leave out in the foyer, make sure that you uh, make sure you put your put just PD next to it. And I'll know what that means. And I'd appreciate it very much. And uh, and then this is not free shirts, So don't go by and go. I just put paid anyway. Uh, we don't want you doing that. Just make sure you get it all paid and taken care of tonight. We'll appreciate it. That leads us to the next thing. We've got a fundraiser coming up, uh, and we had one in December. We've got one on, on uh, January the 23rd. Uh, it's going to be our bake auction. We're asking as many people as possibly can to help us with this bake auction by simply baking something 
putting it on the in the auction. That is going to be Sunday night, January 23rd, after church is over with. Now, what we're doing, we'll have some tables set up in the hallway out here, and uh, we'll ask everybody that's bringing stuff to be sure and come. But between 6.30, 6.45, church starts at 7. We will have some cards for you to fill out your name and what the, uh, the item is, and, uh, and then we will meet after church in the uh, fellowship hall, and when you go in there, we will bring the items out that we're, that we're auctioning off, and you can bid on it if you want. We have, we have uh, husbands sometimes bid on the very thing that their wife just made because their wife will never make it for them, and so this is the only way they can get it. And so, and we appreciate the wives doing that because that allows us, all the money that goes towards this uh, goes towards our summer youth camp. And uh, summer camp is not until July, but we got a lot of money we got to raise between now and then. Uh, our, our, our church hosts the camp, and uh, this is our fourth year. And so we're hosting the camp means we've got to raise a, a couple thousand more than what normal, uh, normally the churches would. And so that helps us pay for a lot of different extra things that we do uh, at camp that we provide and stuff. And so if you can help us, this will help. Uh, all the money will go towards that, uh, and we will hope we're hoping to raise between about fifteen hundred or so uh, to two thousand. That would be great. That would help us out, get a little bit closer to what our goal is, and uh, and that way we do have a, a couple of fundraisers, but we got a big one that's going to come up about May, and uh, we've got to get everything ready to go and make sure we get all of our money raised and everything is ready, and so. If you can help us, that will help a teenager go to camp this year, and we'd appreciate that very much. Uh, camp is not, uh, it's not a vacation, and uh, we've had some people, we'd come back from camp, and we'd have people come up and go, wow, you had some days off. And I thought, there were no days off at all. And uh, every day starts about 6 a.m., and I was getting in bed about 2 a.m. and getting right back up for about four or five days of that, and uh, it was great. And so, there, but there was no vacationing. So, all of our workers that go, they they have full time jobs, and so they have to take off for the week. And uh, us paying their way to camp is really uh, not a lot. And so, especially with what they do for us at camp. So, all of our workers in our teen department that do that, they take a week off to to go to camp and put up with stuff every once in a while. And um, so, you know, if you, you're, if you don't like drama, get around a teenager for a little bit, you'll understand what that is, and you deal with that for all week long. But uh, it's great to see what God does in their life, and that's what our whole purpose is, and uh, to see teenagers get saved. And a lot of teenagers get saved last year, and uh, our biggest thing that we look forward to is uh, to see a lot of teenagers surrender to the ministry. And so that's one of our goals <coughs> Excuse me. every year as we go to camp. And so if you can help us, write up this, uh, this aisle here at the back of our auditorium is a poster and uh, if you could put on there that you, your name and what you would bake uh, we'd appreciate that very much we've got to get that filled up pretty well we've only got a couple of weeks until we do that and uh, so that's coming up and so if you could help us out uh, I would really appreciate that very much I appreciate everybody that's already filled it uh, filled yours out but uh, we need some more and so uh, guys ladies if you do that, and we've talked to our teenagers, some of them are going to bake some stuff too. And so uh, then we'll bring it out and we'll start auctioning it off. It's a lot of fun. So sa start saving your money right now as well. Uh, it's a lot of fun to start bidding on things, and we'll have a great time doing that after church Sunday night, January 23rd. The following week is our kickoff for our ladies' fellowship. Uh, that's going to be right over here in our coffee house and journey classroom. Uh, they meet at 6.30. Uh, child care is provided. Uh, child care is basically for the uh, nursery and toddler type of ch children. And uh, if you can, uh, if you need that, that's available as well. Uh, the, the event is free uh, for the ladies to come to. Uh, guys, you're not invited to it. Uh, the ladies, uh, we ask that all the ladies come. We have a great time. And then, uh, I said, we, I've never been there before. Uh, the ladies have a great time. Uh, they, and we ask our teen girls to come as well. 
and uh, they'll come in. They have a dinner that'll be prepared. Uh, it's uh, fantastic. Do we know what we're having this first? Was it Frito pie? All right, good. Uh, Frito pie, and uh, and they'll they'll have that all set up and ready for you to do. They have Frito pie and the trimmings on all that. And then after the fellowship time, uh, I think Priscilla Schreier is doing a deal this this time and uh, uh, via video, and uh, then after her message, they do a discussion for a little bit. Usually finish, try to finish around 8, 8.15 or so, something like that, and uh, it's all free. And so, if you've not, ladies, if you've not been coming to our Ladies Fellowship, get started with, with us this coming uh, month at, on January 31st for the guys so we don't leave you out. Uh, we want all the guys to try to start coming I realize a lot of guys they don't hang out with other guys. You don't want to share your feelings. Well, we're not into sharing feelings. Uh, so we, we meet at Potter's Pizza. We're not into the spiritual stuff on Monday nights either out there. Uh, we're into just eating, basically, and, standing, and sitting and talking. And so we, we have a great time. It's an all-you-can-eat buffet, but uh, it's all you can pay for, too, because uh, it costs you about $10 to go to that. And uh, we'll meet out there at 630 at Potter's Pizza on Buffalo Gap Road. Uh, you can pay as you leave. And, uh, man, it's a great, a great opportunity for you to kind of get to know other guys. That's the only way this is going to work. For you to fit into uh, our church and our f church family and all, you got to come to things. Uh, if you just come into church and you don't stay for things, it's kind of hard to get to know people. And so that's why we have these type of things, and then we, we have activities or fellowships after church is over with at different times. And it's just an opportunity for you to just fellowship. And uh, the Bible talked about that, that the people, uh, they would have their time of worshiping God, but they also spent time together. And so that's what, uh, that's what it's all about. And so uh, Joanne's over our ladies' ministry. And just so you know, jo Joanne doesn't work at our church. Uh, we, we've got people that think she does. Uh, Joanne, this is something that uh, we asked her to do so, uh, a couple of years ago. And so she heads up our ladies' ministry. Uh, she's inherited a couple of things that uh, she wasn't supposed to, but she doesn't get paid. So if you ever, if you ever wonder, uh, you know, what does Joanne do here at the church? Uh, she has volunteered for several things, and so she doesn't work here full time. So for you that thought she did, we've had some new people come in with us, and uh, they always wonder uh, what area of the church she works in. She doesn't. Uh, she works a full-time job just like a lot of you do, and uh, so I appreciate what she does uh, and heading up the ladies' ministry. She's done a great job and uh, continues to do that, takes it very seriously, and, uh, and so uh, we appreciate what she does and everything. So she's got her and Dorothy and all the crew, they've been working on getting things ready for the spring season or the winter spring, and so we should have a great ladies, uh, ladies' deal. So we're looking forward to that. I think that's everything. I want you to sing a song with us. Uh, this is called uh, In the Sweet By and By, a great old song. And, and by the way, if you have not signed, uh, and I didn't tell Sabre this either, but if you've not signed the petition, there is a petition here in Abilene for those that are voters. Uh, you have to be a registered voter here in the, in the Taylor County. But uh, this is to make Abilene a sanctuary city. They'll be voted on, hopefully. Uh, they'll, this is going to, the petition is basically to push the, uh, the city officials or city leaders to have to put that on the ballot and uh, they're not willing to do that right now why I don't know most some of them say they're Christians so that doesn't make sense so this is a deal we're having to kind of push force force feed the thing I guess is what you want to do and uh, so we've had a lot of people sign but we need you to uh, if you haven't signed it uh, we we're gonna have to I've got to turn some of this stuff in a little bit earlier than I planned and so if you haven't signed this be sure and sign that tonight and I would appreciate that very much sing with me just a verse of sweet by and by I love this song great old song there's a land that is fairer than day sing with me there's a land that is fairer than day And by faith we can see it afar For the Father waits over the way To prepare us a dwelling place there In the sweet by and by We shall meet on that beautiful shore in the sweet by and by, we 
shall meet on that beautiful shore. Well, we are glad you have joined us tonight. As you know, we always, the first thing we do is to have a prayer time. And I'm going to give you uh, some prayer requests that our church has. And um, then we'll take your prayer requests uh, and we'll pray with you about it. And we always encourage our people that uh, when you pray in your daily quiet time uh, every morning, or if you're not night owl and you pray, you do your prayer time at night, be sure and just ask the Lord to answer all the requests that was given in the Wednesday night Bible class. And he knows what they are, and we'll be able to pray for them all this week. So if you'll do that, we'll appreciate that. Let's start in this section right over here. If you've got a special prayer request, we want to pray with you about it tonight. For that and uh, this infusion that he just had this past week uh, showed that the cancers are getting smaller so we're really grateful about that I want you to continue to pray for Steve uh, Rosa Rocha we want to continue to pray for Rosa uh, and Shirley Newman we want to continue to pray for Shirley and we appreciate your prayers for her and if you'll continue to pray uh, Beverly and Don we want to continue to pray for them uh, Bertha and Charlie we want to keep them on our prayer list Mary Ellis Mary is real sick I want you to pray for her uh, text Robin we need to pray for, uh, Janie Paz and, and Ralph, uh, they both are sick, we want to pray for them. Uh, Lou Ella Roach, Lou Ella was in our church, her and her, uh, her husband, uh, five or six years ago, they moved to California, and now they've moved to Illinois, uh, and she fell the other day uh, while she's taking a bath and broke her thumb. And she <coughs> sent me a card and wanted you to be sure and pray for her, uh, and uh, she's having a lot of pain with that. Peggy Robson and the Walker family, we want to pray for all of them. Uh, we need their prayers. Sabra Kessner, we want to continue to pray for Sabra. And we'll pray about that job interview tomorrow as well. Uh, Gary and Terry, we've already mentioned theirs. Uh, Ron and Yolanda, we need to continue to pray for them. Carolyn and Jim Smith, we want to continue to pray for. We mentioned Paul Vasquez, we want you to continue to pray for Paul. Uh, Wade and Amy Dwiggins, both of them are sick, we want to pray for them. Uh, Brother Art Waller, we want to pray for him. Joyce McCoy, Joyce is real sick and we want to pray for her. And Kay Loving had a procedure done this Monday and we want to pray that'll work out really well. And you could hear Kevin a while ago, he's got a sinus he's dealt with for a week and a half and continue to pray for him if you will. Uh, and Diana and Jamie, we're glad they're here tonight. They've both been sick. We want to be sure and pray for them. Um, how many of you have a special prayer request we could pray with you about? Let's see. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you so very much for your blessings. Thank you for the privilege we have to be here tonight and study your word. And thank you for all the folks that have come tonight. And we're grateful to you, Lord, that we have the privilege to spend this next uh, 30 minutes in studying your word. And, and we just ask you for your blessings on everyone that came. Thank you for our guests tonight, and I pray that you'd help them to feel a real warm welcome in our midst here at Northside. We're grateful to you for your blessings, and we ask you to be with us now tonight. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Help me to teach clearly and plainly and simply tonight, and we'll give you the praise for everything in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Well, I want to talk to you about a little humor tonight uh, before we get serious in our Bible study. Uh, I read some things that I thought was really cute. I, I read an article about a man who said um, he knew the exact moment that their honeymoon was over. Now, you guys can remember those days, you know, how if we first get married, I mean, everything is all mushy and all this kind of stuff. But there comes a time when you settle back into real, real life. Well, here, here's one of those things. Uh, a man said... Uh, he knew the exact moment that his marriage uh, uh, was over. Uh, his wife was a nurse, and for months she fussed over every little pain and scratch he had. One day he said he was climbing, climbing up in the attic to fix the attic fan. He hit his head on a cross beam going into the attic and cut a big gash on his forehead. He got big splinters in both hands crawling along the beams. He almost cut his finger off replacing the fan belt. Coming down, he missed the last two rungs on the ladder and broke his ankle. He walked into the kitchen, head bleeding, hands swollen from the splinters, blood streaming from the badly cut finger, hobbling on his broken ankle, and his wife took one look and, uh, one look and said, Are those your good pants? <laughs> uh, that tells you pretty well that it's over. Well, I read, uh, I read three articles th this week that was called uh, Tragic Mistakes. Now, let, me, let me read these for you. There was a man who was suspicious of his wife, uh, and he called home in the afternoon. And when the maid answered, he said, let me speak to my wife. And the maid said, well, sir, she's upstairs with someone, and she said she was not to be disturbed. So the man said, go to the closet, get out the shotgun, go upstairs and kill both of them. So the lawyer maid got the shotgun out, went upstairs, shot both of them, came back down and she said, Sir, they're both now dead. What should I do with the bodies? And he said, Put them in a the pool and I'll take care of them when I get home. And she said, But sir, we don't have a pool. So he said, Isn't this five, 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 one, two, three, four? <laughs> That's what you call a tragic mistake, right? Uh, and then another one was a preacher was visiting and he saw a little boy at the front door jumping up trying to ring the doorbell. He thought he would help the little guy out, so he walked up, picked the little guy up so he could ring the doorbell, and the little guy did. And the preacher said to the little boy, now, now what, little man? And he said, now we run before Mr. Jones, Jones can load his gun. <laughs> and then here's, here's one that's kind of pitiful. Uh, two boys were going out door to door inviting people to come to church. And one rude lady said, boys, I'm not interested, and slammed the door, but it didn't close. Huffy, she, uh, she slammed it harder, still didn't close. Now she thinks that they have their foot in the door, so she rushed back to really slam the door. When one of the boys said, lady, before you do that again, you really need to move your poodle. <laughs> We're going to start a brand new Bible study tonight. I hope you'll join us every uh, Wednesday night for our Bible study. Uh, I've just entitled this series, The Greatest Chapters of the Bible. Uh, you know, uh, every, every chapter of the Bible is a great book because it's God's holy word. But there are some chapters in the Bible that are just really special. They just have a lot of stuff for us uh, and a lot of stuff that, uh, uh, that is a blessing to us. So I wanted to start this series with what is known as the most popular, the most famous uh, chapter in the Bible. When they do surveys and they ask people the question, what is your favorite chapter of the Bible? 85% of the people say, my favorite chapter of the Bible is the 23rd Psalm. So I thought, well, since we're going to do a series on the great chapters of the Bible, we just want to start with the one that's the most famous. So tonight we're going to look at the 23rd Psalm. When people uh, uh, <clears throat> go down the hall of any, uh, of any hospital, there on the wall somewhere you'll see a copy of the 23rd Psalm. When you go to the Bible bookstore, you'll see uh, just book after book after book. You'll see just, uh, just uh, uh, pictures with frames uh, that all has the 23rd Psalm in it. People memorize it. Uh, teachers tell their class to memorize the 23rd Psalm. Uh, dying saints quote it uh, as they breathe their last breath. So we're going to take a look at why is the 23rd Psalm so popular? Why do most people say, that's my favorite chapter of the Bible? Now, if you have your Bible, I want you to turn to the 23rd Psalm. And then I don't want you to cheat. Uh, 
but uh, I'm going to ask you to help me quote that. Most of you have memorized this, this, this psalm. If you haven't memorized it, uh, you have your Bible, and you can read it along with us. But I want us to go over the 23rd Psalm, and then we're going to uh, get into it. You know, the main reason the 23rd Psalm is so great is because it, uh, it reveals to us that the Lord is like our shepherd, and He takes care of us, and He loves us, and He is there for us. So are y'all ready? The 23rd Psalm. Here we go. Let's do it out loud. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. David is the one that, uh, that God used to write this psalm. And it's unique that David, when God selected him to write this psalm, uh, was himself a shepherd. Uh, and so uh, he is going to use a lot of uh, uh, things that a shepherd would be aware of that other people aren't aware of. So keep that in mind, if you will. The location of the 23rd Psalm is really unique. When you look at the Psalm before the 23rd Psalm, the 22nd Psalm, it's a Psalm about the crucifixion. When you go through that, the information that Jesus would fulfill on the cross, you find that mentioned in the 22nd Psalm. For example, it talks about the fact that Jesus, they would uh, nail his hands and his feet would be pierced. They would nail him to a cross. He would be crucified. It also talks about the fact uh, that uh, they would uh, cast lots for his clothing, which the soldiers did, as you know. Uh, it talks about the mocking uh, that would go on when they took him into the hall and scourged him. It talks about how the father felt when he had to turn his, uh, his head away when our sins on the cross was placed upon Jesus and Jesus had to die and his blood paid our sin debt. So you start off with the cross and Jesus dying on the cross for our sins. Then you jump to the 24th Psalm and it's a Psalm about heaven. And it talks about who is gonna ascend into the hill of the Lord. And it talks about us going to heaven that one day the Lord is going to prepare a place for us. And when he comes back, we're, he's going to take us all to be with him. And we'll spend forever in heaven. So between the crucifixion when Jesus died on the cross. Until we get to heaven. They place the 23rd Psalm. The 23rd Psalm reminds us that during our life here. Because of what Jesus did on the cross in Psalms 22, and because of the fact that we're on our way to heaven in Psalms 24, that Psalms 23 is going to be all about how in this life, God is going to be with us, that he's going to be to us like a good shepherd was to their sheep, and that we're going to have a good life because God is going to be there to take care of us. So let's talk about that tonight. So we're in Psalms chapter 23, verse 1. David starts off by saying, The Lord is my shepherd. Again, David, when he started off in his life, he was a shepherd. Uh, and he kept his father's flock. But then from there, God did some fabulous stuff in his life, as we'll talk about in just a little bit. But one thing David was aware of, and I want you to think about this. Being a shepherd, he was aware that the care of the sheep totally depended upon the character of the shepherd. And let me say this. If the shepherd was gentle, if the shepherd was kind and brave and intelligent, if the shepherd was hardworking, if he was totally uh, 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 devoted to the sheep, then if you were a sheep in his flock, you had it made. But if the shepherd was cruel and lazy and selfish and uncaring, if he was a coward, wasn't willing to put his life on the line for you, then his sheep had a difficult time. Sheep, as you know, 
uh, had to deal with storms and enemies and pests and diseases and bullies in the herd. And the sheep had no fangs, they had no horn, uh, horns, they had no claws to defend themselves. The little old legs are so sharp they couldn't outrun anything. So they depended on somebody had to feed them, somebody had to protect them, uh, somebody had to doctor them. Sheep, in order to have it good, had to have a good shepherd. So David is going to take that thought, uh, that knowledge and remind us that as Christians, the Lord is our shepherd. The one who created the world is our shepherd. The one who has all power, who can do anything. There's, there's nothing that can happen in your life that he can't control. And David is going to lay all of those things out for us as we go through the study tonight. So David starts off with, the Lord is my shepherd. It's a personal thing. If you're a Christian, God has adopted you and he has assumed the responsibility to take care of you. So it's really important for you to realize, as a child of God, you are in good hands. You're in the hands of the one who knows everything, the one who has the power to do anything. And by the time we get through with this, uh, this uh, Bible study tonight, I hope you'll leave here realizing what a great privilege it is to be a child of God. It's just a wonderful thing to be a Christian. So in verse 1 of chapter 23, David makes the statement, I shall not want. Now, he didn't mean that we'll never have uh, anything that we want in life or that life is going to be a bed of roses. He didn't mean that. He didn't mean that we will never uh, have problems that we have to face. What he meant was, I realize that I'm under the Lord's care and I'm depending on him to care for me and I am content with how the Lord is going to care for me. So all of us should be in that category as well. David would think, making it personal. When the storms come, and they will, then my shepherd will keep me safe. And in your life, you'll have problems. And if you'll turn to the Lord, he'll help you with those problems. Or when the pests bother me, David said, like he do, they do the sheep, then he'll provide the repellent that I need. When enemies come to harm me, he will protect me. You know, when, when David went to, uh, to Saul and nobody was willing to face Goliath, David reminded him, while I was my father's shepherd, a bear came and God helped me kill that bear. And then one time a lion had one of my lambs in his mouth and I killed the lion. And he was talking about the fact that God helped him do whatever he needed to do to care for the sheep. And so he wants to relay to you tonight, God will do whatever he needs to do to meet the needs of your life. When enemies come, he protects us. When droughts come, he provides a water hole for us. And when the sun beats down hot, he provides a shade for me. Life is filled with obstacles. We all are going to face those. The Christian life is no bed of roses by any stretch of, the, uh, of our imagination. But we need the Lord to care for us and help us daily. Out of the Lord's care, I know people, and you know people, who have decided, I don't need the Lord in my life. I can do whatever I want to do, and I can handle the situations uh, like I want. But I'm going to tell you, we are limited in our life, and you're going to run against obstacles you can't solve. You're going to have problems come up in your life that you cannot straighten out. And you're going to have needs come up in your life that you can't meet. So God comes and He says, I'd like to be your shepherd, and if you'll let me be your shepherd, I'll meet those needs for you. Verse 2, David said, He makes me to lie down in green pastures. Key there is green. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. The, uh, uh, <clears throat> due to the nature of a sheep, they will not lie down unless the shepherd provides uh, for their anxieties. Uh, I read two books because I wanted to get some information about sheep that's not in the Bible. Uh, and, and, and the psalm is all about uh, how a sheep looks at their shepherd. Uh, and so uh, I read two books. And uh, if you're interested in that, you may be or not be. Philip Keller had a great book on a sheep's look at the shepherd. Great book. I enjoyed that. Some of the information I give you about sheep tonight uh, is from that book. And then also uh, Angel Martinez, a, a tremendous evangelist of, of, of the a previous generation, uh, wrote a book called The Shepherd of the Sky. Uh, when I went to Bible college, I bought that book and read it, 
And I was totally amazed at how, uh, how much information they gave us about that. So here was thing, due to the nature of a sheep, you know, the, verse 2 says, He makes me to lie down in green pastures. These guys who knew sheep well said that the shepherd had to meet certain criteria or the sheep would not lie down. And he said if they were afraid, if they sensed danger, they wouldn't lie down. They'd just stay ready to run. And then he said that they have pests, they have the flies, the ticks, and if the shepherd doesn't uh, put repellent on them, uh, they won't lie down. They'll be miserable. Uh, and, uh, and he said if they're hungry, they will stay up and scrounge for grass. You can't, they won't lay down if they're hungry. So uh, he says that the Lord makes me to lie down in green pastures. Green is a key word. Uh, the only green pastures in the Holy, in, uh, Holy Land are those that the shepherds have went in, cut the brush down, moved the rocks out, plowed and planted it, uh, and uh, watered it, uh, something that the lazy shepherds wouldn't do. Uh, and as a result, their sheep struggled with, uh, to survive on, on dry, sparse grass. But David comes along and he says, the Lord calms our heart because he makes us lay down. We don't have to stay up in scrounge because he supplies our every need. And we have green grass because he makes sure that we've got good pastures uh, to feed in. Verse 2, he goes on to say, and he leads me beside the still waters. Key word there is still water. In the places where David, around Bethlehem and, on, and up through the mountains, going up to those luscious uh, grass of the high country, uh, there were rivers that when the snow began to melt in the mountains, that became raving streams. And if the shepherd didn't have a way to water his sheep, the sheep would get out and they would wait out in the water to get a drink. Uh, and once the water got to their belly, it would crash them on down and they'd all drown. So the good shepherds would go down to the raging streams. They would build a rock diver a diversion that would catch this raging water and they would channel it over to a special uh, pond that was cool. I mean, that, that it wasn't a raging thing. It was just kept that way. So uh, David said, he leaves me beside still waters. In other words, what the sheep needed to keep them from drowning in the raging rivers is for the shepherd to build this dam and diversion so they could drink out of a pool of water that was calm. And what he was saying is, whatever we need, that's what the Lord does for us. Sheep, they told me in the book, that he leads me beside still waters, that the body of a sheep is 70% water. Seems unreal, but that's, that's what they said. So it's necessary for the sheep to get the water to, uh, enough water to maintain uh, body metabolism. So how did they do that? They got their water in three different ways. Uh, early in the morning, there would be dew on the grass. So the shepherds would get the sheep up really early before the sun came out so that when the sheep were eating the grass, they could get their water from the dew. And also the shepherds would dig deep wells uh, and they would have a trough for the, she for the sheep to, uh, to drink from. And then they had those safety pools that they diverted on that way. Lazy, uncaring shepherds wouldn't dig the wells they wouldn't get their sheep up early. They wouldn't fix the, uh, the safety pools. And as a result, uh, their sheep had to drink from stagnated ponds that kept them sick all the time. But the Lord uh, leads us beside still waters. And that's what he's, David is saying. Hey, depend on the Lord. He will help you. He cares about you. If you, um, if you leave here tonight, I want you to understand that you are not just somebody. God loves you. God cares about you. He loved you enough to send Jesus on the cross to die for your sins so you could spend forever with him. I have a preacher friend of mine who always makes this statement, uh, and he says, it is amazing what God will do so that we can spend forever with him. And that's the, that's the truth. Verse, 20, verse 3 says, he restoreth my soul. These guys talked about, as being, uh, being shepherds, they talked about the fact that sheep have a problem that is just strictly a sheep problem. And that is, it was something called a casting. He said the, little, the sheep are fat, they're heavy, they have long fleece. And when they lay down in a wallow or a depression in the ground, they'll roll over on their back 
And when they do, all their weight is on their back and they can't get themselves up. So these guys said that what happens, their center of gravity holds them to the ground and they're helpless. So he goes on to say that the circulation is cut off from the legs, equilibrium gets off, they get numb and can't move, and the sun, in the sun, they will die in a few hours, and animals can easily kill them. They're helpless. So the shepherd comes when he sees that happening, turns them uh, in their back up and rubs their legs until the feeling comes back and then sends them off on their way again. And he reminds us that the Lord comes to us when we falter and he forgives us and gives us a second chance, gives us a new start. Verse 3 also says, He leads me in a path of righteousness for his namesake. Sheep left to themselves, these guys said, uh, will self-destruct. He said the sheep will eat poison uh, weeds uh, they'll eat the grass down to the roots so the, the, the grass will dry, uh, die. They'll walk over the same trail until they create a gully. And then they'll pollute the land with parasites. So a good shepherd would go in and pull out the poison weeds, would move them from pasture to pasture so they wouldn't uh, totally d devastate a pasture. They would constantly see to their care. So again, he was reminding us that that's what the Lord does for us. The Lord answers our prayers, provides our needs, uh, and it's wonderful to be in his care. Here's something really unique, I thought. Psalms chapter 23, verse 4 says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. These guys said that there was a mountain pass where David had to keep his sheep that they called the Valley of the Shadow of Death. And this valley was a mountain pass that the shepherd would have to take his sheep through to get them from the lowlands in the summertime up to the luscious green grass of the high country. And the problem with this, it was dangerous uh, and the shepherds hated to do that, but they had to do that to get their sheep where they could eat. It was dangerous because on this one side over here, if the sheep fell off, it, fell, it had a drop off of 100 feet. And if they fell off, they were dead. But in a narrow path over then to the other side was the high cliffs. And in those cliffs was the wolves and the bears and the lions. And so what would happen uh, is that the sheep, as the shepherd took them through the, uh, this pass, if they, got, if they strayed off and they fell off the side, they would die. If they didn't stay put, if they didn't stay with the herd, then they uh, would get uh, eat up by one of the bears or the lions. So what they did was they came up with this plan. And the plan was is that they would run their sheep through this mountain pass. Keeping them together, they thought that uh, they could keep them safe. But their safety totally depended upon whether they stayed close to the shepherd. So with the Lord, David said, Yea, though I walk through the valley, we don't have to run through the valley, but God can handle every situation we have and he, we can walk through because if the bears come, he'll take care of them. Uh, if they start straying, he'll take care of them. Uh, and uh, so he's again reminding us with the Lord and under the Lord's care, uh, we have it great as Christians. And then he goes on to say, uh, in uh, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5, uh, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee so that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. In verse 4, he said, thy rod and thy staff comfort me. Well, the Bible is the word of God that brings us comfort and warns us and informs us. And the Holy Spirit is God's staff that guides us and strengthens us and intercedes for us. Verse 5, he says, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You know, the, sheep, the shepherd would go before the sheep to the pastures that they were going to have up through the high country. And what he would do, he would pick out the poison weeds. He would clean out the, the water holes and repair the earthen dams. And then he would trap and run off the wolves and the bears and the lions so that when the sheep got there, he had taken care of everything that they would need there. It reminds us of how the Lord prepares for us. Philippians chapter 4 verse 19 says, But my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. 
Verse 5, David said, Thou anointest my head with oil. In the summer the flies would come, and especially the nasal flies, and they would lay their eggs in the, in the moisture of the sheep's nose. And it would drive those sheep crazy. So these guys said that the shepherd would mix up oil and sulfur and spices and make a repellent. And every day that the shepherd would, uh, would uh, uh, rub that repellent on them so that they uh, could stay at peace. Reminds us of Isaiah chapter 26 verse 3. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. Verse 5, David said, My cup runneth over. Uh, in Bible days, people traveled a lot. The Jewish people, three times a year, wherever they lived, they had to go to Jerusalem for, to observe the Jewish feast. Well, they had a, 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 just a, a, something that they went, a ritual, I guess you'd call it, that if you were on your way from wherever you were to Jerusalem, and it came nighttime, you could go to any Jewish home and ask them, could you spend the night? And they were obligated to give you some food uh, and to put you up for the night. Well, if, um, if at supper time, when it came time for them to pour your drink, if they ran the drink over, that was their way of saying, you guys are welcome to stay. You're welcome to come anytime. Uh, you know, just make our house your house. But if they just filled the drink up halfway, they were saying, as soon as the sun comes up, hit the road, Jack. You don't come back no more, no more, no more. Uh, and they had that figured out so they didn't have to go through a lot of explanations. David said in verse 6, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. These guys said that every, sheep, uh, every shepherd has two dogs. Uh, one that works the front of the herd and one that works the back of the herd when they're traveling. And so David's saying here that goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. That God has two sheep dogs that cares for us. One of them is goodness. God is always good to us. He's always caring for us. And one of his dogs is mercy. He shows compassion to us. God was good to David. You know, he started off as a shepherd, ended up as the king of Israel, who Israel at that time was the most powerful nation on earth. And David was the first one to say, God has been good to me. When he faced Goliath, God helped him with that. When Saul became his enemies and tried to kill him, uh, God always provided a way out for David. When he had to fight the battles with the Philistines, God was always there to take care of him. So David is reminding us uh, that uh, the Lord has goodness and mercy, that he'll always be good to us. And then he said, I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And these guys mentioned this, and I'll just share it with you. All sheep, like all men, one day die. For uh, the sheep, that's the end of the road. There's no life after death for animals, as you know. But for the Christian, there is life after death. And David reminds us that the Lord, who in this life takes such good care of us, uh, will be there to take care of us in the life to come. In this psalm, David introduces us to the Lord as our shepherd, who takes care of our weaknesses, who takes care of our enemies, who takes care of our future. And how great it is to be under the care of a loving God that cares about every one of our needs. In John chapter 10 verse 11, Jesus said, I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd giveth his life for his sheep. I'm going to read to you a scripture, and we've just got five minutes left. Hebrews 13 verse 20 and 21. Listen to this. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of his everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to, to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Let me close by telling you four things about the Lord when he is your shepherd. First of all, he cares about you. You're always on his mind. He always focuses on you. Uh, he promises us that no good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. He cares. Secondly, he provides. Our shepherd provides for us. Philippians 4 19, but my God shall supply all your need. Number three, he protects us. Psalms chapter 46 verse 1 says, God is our refuge and strength and a very present help in trouble. And then he never leaves us. He's always there. His eyes are always upon us. His ears are always open to our prayer. 
Hebrews 13, 5, I will never leave you, nor I'll never forsake you. Now let me talk to our internet audience. I appreciate all of you guys uh, studying the Bible with us tonight. And I want to remind you that the most important thing in life is to know that you've been saved, that your sins are forgiven, that you have been given the gift of eternal life. It's important that you know that. You don't want to come up to the judgment and think you're going to go to heaven and then find out you didn't do what you needed to do to go to heaven. So for our internet audience and for those of you in our services tonight, I, I want to just uh, uh, talk to you tonight about getting salvation. I want to talk to you about making sure that you are saved, making sure when you die you're going to heaven. And the Bible talks about the fact in Romans 10, 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So what is, what is the plan of salvation? The plan of salvation is number one, you realize I'm a sinner and I can't save myself. Secondly, you realize that sin has a penalty and that penalty is death. Death means separation. Sin separates us eternally from God. Third thing is that we can't save ourselves. There's not anything that we can do to save ourselves. But Jesus died on the cross to save us by uh, having our sins placed upon him as our substitute. He died there on the cross for our sins. So if a person in their life realizes I'm a sinner, realizes that sin has a penalty and it's death, it's separated me from God. And number three, I can't save myself. And I want to know that I am saved. So Romans 10, 13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So online or in the auditorium tonight, if you've never accepted Jesus as your Savior, but you're ready to, you want to be forgiven, you want God to save you and give you the gift of eternal life, that takes place when you ask the Lord to come into your heart. When I got saved, uh, I didn't know how to pray, so somebody helped me pray. So I want to help you pray tonight. So if you're here and you've, you're not saved, you're never excited to invite Jesus into your heart, I'm going to help you to do that tonight. I'm going to lead you in a prayer. And if the words of this prayer coincide with what you feel in your heart, then you pray this prayer to God. Ask the Lord to come into your heart and forgive you and save you. And He promised that He would do that. So I'm going to lead you in what we call the sinner's prayer. And again, listen to the words if the words uh, say what you uh, feel in your heart, you pray this prayer and ask God to save you. Now, if you're here tonight and you're not sure you're saved, you say, well, I think I'm saved, but I'm not sure. Let me tell you how to fix that. Pray the prayer. If you're already saved, nothing will happen. You're already saved. But if you're not saved, you'll get saved. Here's the good thing about that. When you leave tonight, you'll know I've done what I need to do to be saved. I, out of a sincere heart, I ask the Lord to come into my heart and save me. Here's the prayer. Think about it. If you don't, you're not sure you're saved, pray the prayer. If you're already saved, nothing will happen. You'll be, you, but you'll know you're saved. Uh, if you're not saved, he'll get, you'll get saved tonight. So here's the prayer. Pray the prayer with me if you're sincere about that. Here's the prayer. Dear Lord, I acknowledge that I'm a sinner. And that my sins have a penalty and have separated me from you. And dear God, I know that I cannot save myself. But I do know that Jesus Christ can save me because he died on the cross for my sins. So Jesus, I ask you right now to come into my heart, forgive my sins and save my soul from hell. And give me your gift of eternal life. And I'm asking this in Jesus name. Now, if you're online, stay online. I've got some stuff that I want to share with you uh, that will kick in just as soon as you're uh, disconnected from our uh, service tonight. Stay online, uh, and, uh, and, and I'll give you some great information. Any Thank you so very much for worshiping the Lord with us over the Internet today. Our church is in our invitation at this time, and I'd like to spend just a couple of minutes with you this morning. You know, the greatest choice that anyone makes in life is the choice to accept Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. If you've never trusted Him as your Savior, I'd like to give you God's simple plan of salvation so that right now, wherever you are, you can invite Jesus into your heart 
He'll come in and forgive and save you just right there where you are. The greatest choice in life is to invite Jesus into your heart. God's simple plan of salvation says that all of us have sinned and all of us need God's forgiveness. Romans chapter 3 verse 23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But you know what? God still loves us even though we've sinned. And God still loves you. So God provided a way for us to be forgiven. And that way is through the death of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. The Bible says when he died on the cross, he died on the cross for your sins to pay your sin debt. Romans 5, 8 says, But God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And you know, God has a plan. And that plan says he's got a gift that he wants to give you. And that gift will be yours when you invite him into your heart. Romans chapter 6, verse 23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. We get this gift by inviting Jesus to come into our heart and be our Savior. Romans 10, 13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. When I got saved, I didn't know how to call upon the Lord, and so someone helped me, and I'd like to help you. If you've never invited Jesus into your heart, but you want to, it happens when you pray a simple prayer, meaning it in your heart. And that prayer would go something like this. I'll say the words, you pray the prayer in your own heart, meaning it, and the Lord will come into your life. Here's the prayer. Dear God, I realize I'm a sinner. I understand that my sin has a penalty, and that penalty is death of separation from you forever. But I also believe Jesus on the cross died for my sins. And I'm asking you, dear Lord, to come into my heart right now. Forgive my sins and save my soul. My dear friend, if you prayed that prayer, and you meant that with all your heart, Romans 10, 13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And that's what you just did. You just called upon the Lord. And based upon the Word of God, the Bible says that Jesus has come into your heart and given you eternal life. We'd like to help you. If you'll contact us here at Northside Baptist Church, I have some great material that we'll send to you and help you in your Christian life. God bless you now. Join us for our next service.